Hey folks, Norseman here. If you want to see how to make one of these badass leather bed roll, then stick around because we're going to do it. Before we get started I wanted to show you the tools that I had set aside for this project but keep in mind that you can always adapt or use what you have or make the tools that you don't have. A small homemade anvil or other hard flat surface. A pair of leather shears. A couple of rivet setters. A ball peen hammer. A slot punch. A very inexpensive strap cutter. A pair of nippers. For most any project in the field, nothing's ever going to replace a sharp knife. A hole punch. Aside from the tools used for this project, we're going to need an assortment of copper rivets, the various hardware required, and a tube of barge cement. And the last critical piece is obviously the hide. So I already had an old set of straps that I determined to be just about the right size, maybe just a little short, so I'm going to use those as my template. Before I cut the straps, I need to be able to establish a straight edge for my strap cutter to work. So I had this old strap piece that I'm using as a gauge because it's exactly the width that I need for the hardware that I have. So now that I have my three straps cut, I'm going to size them up against my old straps. And then give myself a little bit more length, keeping in mind that I'm going to need about two inches to fold over for the buckle. And then I'll cut the second one to match the first.
So here's a tip. If you pre-curl your rivet heads prior to using them, you'll get a better fit on the inside and less of an edge to snag. And you do that by creating a divoted face in whatever you're using as an anvil. Put your rivet head in and preset it. Now it has a curve that will bite into the leather on the back side. Now there are definitely more precise ways to do this, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball the center and mark it at each dot. Maybe not ideal if I was doing a commercial product, but this is just a bushcraft. Okay, so now that we got the straps done, that's sort of the easy part. Now I need to make a piece that connects to them with the rings and then the shoulder strap. So we're actually going to end up making one more of these, but I wanted to do everything in a, in a nice linear fashion. I'm going to have to figure out how far apart I want them to ride. So when I put the carrying handle on, and I'm going to make mine the width of the bottom of my bushcraft pack so that I can keep the handle on it and they'll still fit the strap holders 
on the bottom of the pack. So that's what I'm going to do, but you can do whatever suits your needs the best. So for this purpose, it's looking like just about 10 and a half inches to where the outsides of the straps will go. So now I have this piece of leather that I had cut off of the hide to get a nice straight edge. So I don't want to waste this, so I'm going to use this to make my handle. So first thing I have to do is figure out how wide I want the handle. And then I need ten and a half inches to end to end with enough extra for it to roll back under and rivet back on over the straps like this. So what it's looking like is I want this strap, the portion of the handle, to be a little wider than the rest of the straps. So I just lay this strap down and give myself an idea and then I'll adjust my strap cutter and cut one long length and then I'll figure out how much I need on the ends to go around it. This is just a scrap piece from earlier. So I've taken my measurements and folded my ends and then marked approximate rivet locations with enough room for this to move. Uh, it'll be tighter than this, but it'll still move. And then I want to figure out what kind of handle I want in the middle and size it up. If you look on the internet, there's just a million different examples. So it's about coming up with something that you like uh, that suits your purposes. So when it comes to the D's for hooking up the shoulder strap, you've really got two options. You can go with these with the metal tabs, uh, which are breast collar connectors from a saddle shop, or you can go with a standard D on the folded over leather. I'm going to fold the leather over the breast collar strap and then put a rivet through that hole so everything is really secure and it's less likely to wear out over time because it's not just being held by the leather.
now that I got that done, we can put all the pieces together and see how they work. that seems to be exactly what we were after. Now the next thing is I have to make the chest strap. It's going to attach by these two buckles and then one of these is going to go to a short piece which attaches to another one of these buckles just like the straps have. And the other one is going to attach to this long piece, which will have a tab end cut and holes just like the straps. So I'm going to get busy making these, and then I'll check back with you when they're done. Okay, so now I have completed the chest strap. And the last thing I want to do is I want to put, not a pad, but I want to put a patch of leather here as weight distribution. Um, because this, this has the potential to be kind of heavy. Uh, if I'm rolling up a canvas shelter or, or a whalen lean-to and a wool blanket and who knows what else. Um, so I want to put a little bit of weight distribution on here. So what I've done was I traced one of the straps on here. I'm going to figure out how long I need it and cut it. And then I'm going to use my slot punch to punch sets of two holes that the strap can weave in and out of. So I'll show you that in just a second. So I finished the shoulder strap and I edged all of the straps and everything that wasn't previously edged. Everything fits together nicely. So now I'm going to go roll up my canvas tent and my wool blanket and show you how it all fits together. This is the finished product. I can detach it. If I want to carry it like this. Rolled up in here is two military shelter halves, or the old military tent, and one wool blanket. Um, I don't have the poles and pins in here, but you can see there's plenty of adjustment. I can add much more to this, or um, because I made the holes go all the way around, I can, I can do as small a load as I want with it. Um, a quick note on the materials. This hide that I have is one that I got on clearance at Tandy, so it's really dry. It's a uh, it sort of feels like a veg tan, but it's a uh, factory dyed. So on some of the bends on it, it's cracked along there. Um, I bought it just for kind of weird projects like this. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go really, really heavily oil it with olive oil. So I can take that dryness out of it and bring some life back to it. Other options that I could do is where I've edged all these. I could go through and edge dye them black or dark brown or something and then burnish the edges. There's a, there's a lot of different ways that I can finish it. Uh, the hardware that I have is stainless steel. I only use stainless steel because I couldn't find everything that I wanted to do in brass and I wanted to get this video made. So, Hey folks, if you enjoyed that or if you got any use out of it, then uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, if you got any questions about what I did or what I used, then go ahead and drop them in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. So uh, be well.